What's up everybody, it's Realistic with Realistic Productions and I'm doing another tutorial for SoundOracle.net. We're going to continue on with our fundamental series and we're doing a really simple one. This will be a short video and it's hi-hats. Uh, should be fairly fast but there are some things that you want to consider for a hi-hat, some things that you want to consider to cut, maybe some areas that you want to consider to boost as well and see what the fundamental parts of it is and what's important and what's not important. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so I got Pro Tools open up here, and I just put some stuff together. So this isn't anything too elaborate. This is, again, just to get you going with some frequencies that you might want to consider for boosting and cutting when it comes to hi-hats. And as always, these techniques will work in any DAW. And if you're capable of it, open up your DAW of choice and do this along with me. You'll find that you learn a lot more if you do it along with me. I'm just going to go through a couple things. I got a couple different hi-hats to talk about got a tambourine in there some open hi-hats some crashes and then I got a hi-hat that I grabbed from a live kit I recorded and then some overheads too to go over just in case you're working with any of those and like I said before on the kick and snare tutorial you know don't live and die by these rules and guidelines here for these frequencies because it can be different in every song it can be different between different hi-hat samples and hi-hats is is definitely one where you're going to run into things that are going to be different all the time because there's ones that are really soft there's ones that are really electronic sounding there's ones that are real sounding there's open hi-hats there's closed hi-hats there's so many different ones to choose from but there are some general areas that you might want to consider so we'll start with this one it's a little bit more basic that you hear in a lot of pop music hip-hop trap music now the thing about when you have any digital or electronic sounding hi-hats you're not going to see usually too often too much down here and unless it's one of those more softer kind of hi-hats that have more of a ch to it then you'll see a little bit more. But when you're dealing with real hi-hats, you'll see a lot of rumble down here that you don't want. So generally, people that made the sound designer that made that hi-hat is already going to have a lot of this ducked out. But this is just information that you wouldn't need if you see any rumble down there. So the thing about with hi-hats is there's not really too much that you need to boost or anything. Most of the times, you're not going to need to boost anything. But the areas that we're talking about here is the definition of a lot of hi-hats is going to be in that 4K range. So this is where you'll see the definition. And let me solo this frequency here. So that's the definition of the hi-hat right there. That's where you're going to see some of those, a little bit of those fundamentals and everything. A lot of times you won't have to boost that, but just know that that's where it's at. And then another area that's really important when it comes to hi-hats is the top end is going to be from 8 to 12K. You're going to see a lot of that clarity and that brightness. So if you're ever looking of what can I do to make the hi-hat a little bit more clear and brighter, you're going to want to go from 8 to 12 usually. So we've just added a little bit of that clarity to it. Right, so this particular one here, uh, the clarity seems to be a little bit more at 10K. So you see we've got it, that to have just a little bit more brightness to it, a little bit more sparkle to it. Now, a lot of times with hi-hats, an area where you want to avoid boosting is that around 7k now i'm not saying that you have to cut this area i'm just saying maybe this is an area where you don't want to boost it because I'll, I'll show you this can get a little harsh right here see that can get a little harsh you might not want to boost it the uh cut it because you want some of that bite in there if i take it out See, it loses some of it, but I'm just saying that your listeners might not appreciate that rattling around in their ear if that is boosted. So those are the areas of the hi-hat that are 
really important as far as boosting, cutting areas for definition and clarity and that sparkle, that brightness. So I, I told you this wasn't going to be too long. I'll just go through some different sounding hi-hats that you might run into, and then I'll also go through these crashes and open hats here too. A lot of times you don't have to do too much boosting, but I do want to show you where some areas are. So here's another one. This one here is, I purposely put this one in because you'll run into hi-hats a lot like this in sample kits. And there's definitely some harsh frequencies in, in these type of hi-hats that you might want to avoid. So the issue is this area. See when I boost that, that, that can hurt a little bit. So a lot of times when I get a hi-hat like that, what I'll do is I'll throw a de-esser on something like this. Now watch your ears a little bit because I'm gonna solo this out a little bit, this frequency, it can get a little rough when you solo it out. See that pinginess and that and just that ringing that's in there, that can be a little harsh. So that's something that sometimes I might try to duck out a little bit here. I mean, sometimes you might want that bite in there, but if I'm really going for a smoother sound where I don't want to annoy people's ears, I might duck it just a little bit, back off on it. Just makes it a little bit softer, too. And then just imagine, too, this being in the context of a, of a real uh, song with other instruments that you might not want to have some of that harshness in there. And then here's another hat right here. This is one that you'll find that kind of has that shaker vibe to it. And you see what we have some low end information that we might not need. Now let me show you this low end information by itself. Right, so if we were just listening to it by itself, you might want to keep it in there. But in the context of a song, you don't need all that going on in there and building up. So I recommend filtering that out. You can be a little bit more aggressive with it. You know, a lot of times when you filter, it's only to hear, but you can go pretty far all the way up to eight or nine. And then I also threw in a tambourine here to so show you some things on how you might want to EQ something like that. You'll see that we got low end information here. If this was a tambourine solo, you might want to keep that in there, but how often are you going to have a track where it's only tambourine and nothing else, you know? So a lot of that could go right there. So it's worth getting that out because that can really cause some rumbling and muddiness. This area again, you might want to avoid some of this harshness here at like 8K. See that gets a little harsh there? And watch your ears. So that's something. This might be something that you actually would kind of cut. Just to smooth it out a little bit. And then you can find some of that definition down here in the 2 to 3K. And of course you can sparkle it up here on the top there. All right, and then I'll show you a couple things with some open hats here. You'll get some of the, the low-end rumble out of there that you don't want. And then you'll find some of the, the harshness. And here's the tricky part with open hats versus closed hats. You know, you find the definition on a closed hat at 4K, but you find the harshness in the same frequency area as an open hat here. See, that's where it gets a little harsh, a little extra bite that might hurt the ears. Sometimes that's worth cutting. See, that smooths it out a little bit. And then, too, you'll find a little bit of that definition down in this 1 to 3K. And I'll show you another open hat here. This is one that you find a lot in popular music, more of an electronic sounding one here. Uh, you see the filtering's already been done on there. Uh, you'll see, though, that there is some harshness at that 7K range. So that might be something that's worth cutting a little bit just to smooth it out.
see that smooths it out quite a bit there. So a lot of times you won't have to do a lot of boosting. Sometimes you'll have to do a little cutting when it comes to these open hats here. And then I'll show you some symbols because these, these can be a little bit different. There's definitely some different areas that you want to consider. So when I pull up the EQ here and you see the spectral analysis, you'll see that there's some low end information too that we don't want in there. See, that's some stuff that we can definitely go without, especially if we're dealing with a lot of stuff in the mix. And then something to consider with crashes is there's going to be a little bit of a washy ocean sound that you might want to do a little sonar sweep on. So by itself and then you boost it right you can hear a little bit of that washiness so it's usually good to scope that out cut it a little bit see how that kind of cleared it up a little bit and just like the hi-hats you'll see some of that clarity and brightness up here this particular one has a nice little sound at nine K right there. All right, and then I'll show you an example with a hi-hat from live drum kit here. These are a little bit tricky, and this is where a lot of that EQing will come into place if you're ever dealing with stuff that's the real hi-hat and a, a real kit that you're recording. You'll see there's going to be a lot of action down here that needs to be cut out, especially because the microphone that's on the hi-hat is going to be picking up stuff from other instruments. So already that's all information that we don't need in there so that's that's worth cutting right there usually people get a little bit more aggressive there and then this is where you might want to find that definition of a hi-hat that way it can kind of stick out a little bit find some of the clarity and brightness You got to think too. You'll have a, a full drum kit in there going on when you're when you're mixing that. And then I got uh, some overheads right here. This is definitely something that want to pay attention to if you're recording live instruments because these can get really washy and that ocean wave sound that you might want to uh, avoid here. And so I'll show you that you typically want to find a place where there's a lot of action going on with the cymbals and hi hats when you're EQing these. See, we get the, the full kit there, which is cool. That's what you want in, in something like that, uh, some overheads. Get the full kit. So this is an area that I would find to kind of try to scope something out. You can get rid of some of that low rumble. And then here's where you want to scope it out a little bit. See, you get that really oceany sound. It's almost like putting a seashell up to your ear and you hear that that little washiness in there. That's generally an area where you want to get rid of, and it's going to be between the seven to 700 to 1K range to kind of get rid of that. So you kind of duck that out a little bit here. And then a lot of times people want a little sparkle on it, so just a, a little high shelf on there. And you got to think, too, that you'll have a full kit. I just threw this in here real quick to show you an example with some overheads because they're kind of related to uh, cymbals and, and hi-hats. So I just wanted to throw that in there to show you. So hopefully this is useful. Go out there, experiment. Like I said, don't take every single guideline in here like this is what you must do on every single track. These are just some guidelines that get you going on different things that you can do with hi-hats. So I'm hoping that you got a lot out of this tutorial today. Hopefully there was some information that was useful. If you're getting a lot out of this but you want to see more, please feel free to comment below. Let us know what kind of tutorials that you want to see in the future. 
future, and Oracle and I can definitely make that happen. We're always trying to find the content that you want to see. If you're liking what you're hearing from me, you can find me everywhere on social media at Realistic Productions. You can find me at the web, realisticproductions.net. You can find my man Sound Oracle everywhere at Sound Oracle. And if you're looking for the best 808s, the best kicks, the best snares with the craziest loops and samples you can find on the internet right now, go to soundoracle.net. All right, till next time.